Hello again. Gonna get a bit controversial in this session because we're gonna talk about the sacroiliac joint, the SIJ. So as the name suggests, it's the sacrum um, and it's the joint between the ilium and the sacrum. And you'll see an awful lot out there in terms of, oh, you can go away actually, um, in terms of um, what, this, um, what this thing does. And you'll, you'll hear people talking about it popping out and, and having dysfunction and, and pain in it. And I think a lot of the understanding of it, a lot of the approaches come from it, come from sort of how you see it in a book and how it looks. And it really isn't like you think it is when you see it. Now, I'm not saying for a minute that, you know, you can't get pain in it or that there aren't things going wrong with it, but I don't think it, it has the capacity to give the level of problems and imbalances uh, that it seems um, capable of doing when you read all um, the things that people talk about it. So the thing about the sacroiliac joint is that it's, it's a very closed structure. The, the range of movement, even if you look at normal, what sort of considered normal is around two degrees of movement. That's not much um, in this joint. Um, and anything you know, much more than three degrees would be considered hypermobile and you'd have a lot of pain with it. There's also a huge amount of fiber that sits across the top of it. So this, this um, deep tissue, and we're nowhere near it when we put our hands sort of over the area, this, this really deep tissue is massively fibrous. The thoracolumbar fascia tissues that come down onto it, uh, the glute fibers that wrap across the top, even if you looked at that in from a, um, from a sort of muscular perspective. And then the, the, the deep fibers of the, um, the erector spiny structures, the ILS muscles that come down onto the sacrum. In addition, you've got a very interesting little bit of kit that, that goes across from the, um, the ilium to the lumbar, the fifth transverse process of the uh, lumbar spine. And it's the iliolumbar ligament. And this is a very, very solid bit of kit, a very thick bit of kit. And it's the attachment site for uh, the quadratus lumborum, that sort of triangular structure that goes across the top of it. The thing about the the sacrum is you, you don't really want it to move. What you want it to do is to be able to absorb this enormous amount, enormous amount of force that's going through it and to be able to transmit those forces into the rest of the body. So if you had something that moved too much, the potential for it to dislocate would be there. Um, and so it has to be enormously stable. Now, Within that, there is some synovial joint, you know, this sort of slippery stuff, there's some synovial fluid. It's, it's partly uh, synovial as far as the joint is concerned and it's partly, partly fibrous. But certainly in any of the dissections um, that we do, uh, you get to the sacrum and that thing is not moving anywhere. Now, I will be the first to say that we are not necessarily looking at uh, normal in relation to um, our cadavers, but um, even when we've seen people that are, are, are relatively younger, there is virtually no movement until you actually physically put things into it, you know, like a, a knife or a blade, and you actually separate that out. It just doesn't move. So why would it want to move when you're alive? Well, the simple answer is it doesn't. It needs, as I said, to be able to have that degree of of um, load absorption, you know, you jump off the chair, what you don't want it, you know, you, you need it to be able to transfer that information. You don't want to sort of have a, <laughs> so your sacrum uh, flies up and your pelvis drops around your knees. That would be, uh, would be very in inconvenient. So what it's doing is, is as I said, it's, it's, it's a, an attachment site for a huge load of spinal muscles. Again, another reason why you don't want too much movement on it, because all these spinal muscles, all these uh, erectors coming down to here, you, you don't want those moving around. They're going to get um, trapped. They're going to get held in place um, if you're not careful. Similarly, on the other side, you've got the pelvic floor. You've also got things like the sympathetic chain that comes down, the sympathetic uh, chain that's sort of part of our autonomic nervous system. And that's, you know, that's coming down to the, the sacrum there as well. So again, uh, not much movement you, you really want to have in there. So what are people saying? Now the osteopaths will tell me, well, I feel it move and I adjust it and I feel it move underneath my hands. And, and maybe, maybe they do. Maybe I'm just, a, you know, I'm quite prepared to say that I'm a, uh, you know, a palpatory dunce as far as uh, that is concerned. And I think we're feeling something. But the tissues that we're palpating here are very, very strong. 
very multi-directional and there's a lot of them you know it's going down to uh you know two or three centimeters between our hands when we take skin um, even on a skinny person it's a long way away for that joint to be there so um what are we feeling we're feeling uh, thickened tissue, fascia, the glutes. What are we experiencing as far as pain is concerned? Well, again, um, it could well feel like really deep-seated pain that we experience in terms of you know, SIJ dysfunction. But for, from my perspective, I think that there is so much else going on in there as far as the, the gluteal fibers, the deep fibers of the, um, the spinal muscles, the structures coming up through the hamstrings, um, and so on and so forth that are, that are holding these things in place. You know, if you think about the, the attachment of the hamstrings holding on uh, to the, uh, the sacrum, the, sacroili um, the um, sacroiliac joint holding those and pinning those down in place massive degrees of fibers that are that are really holding this in place so um, lots of things that we could experience as far as the the pain is concerned and you know where do you want to go but as far as that sort of sij being you know sacroiliac joint being out or uh, displaced or giving pain um, can it happen yeah, I think it, I think it probably can. I, I'm not saying it can't. I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not accounting for everybody in the world. I'm not saying it's an it's an impossibility. I'm just saying that I think it's um, less likely than we think it is, and the other factors are a little bit closer to the surface. And a lot of it is going to come from. Um, our study of anatomy that we're looking at it from a book and we're looking at it from a, a theoretical perspective and when you see it um, you really see it and you see what those bones look like and those joints look like it kind of changes uh, the perspective that you have so that's the SIJ as I said controversial there's a lot of belief and, and strongly held theory around it and uh, so I'm you know as, as you know I'm quite happy to to question that and pour a bit of cold water on it but what do you think please tell me so it really helps if you press like and subscribe subscribe um, all these things that is what one is supposed to do on social media and what else do you want me to talk about so uh, we're going to have a little look at some other things and people have sent in some requests so thank you for that but if there's anything you want to talk about or uh, for me to have a little look at then please let me know and I'll see you next time